Welcome back, hobby farmers. Steve, Brian, Hello. and Eric Hi. here with another Hobby Farm Guys episode. Today, we'll look at heritage breeds and give you some pros and cons to help you determine if they might be right for your farm. Stick around. You don't want to miss it. So whether you're into chickens, turkeys, goats, pigs, you name it, you've probably seen and heard an awful lot about heritage breeds. In fact, here at Hobby Farm Guys, we frequently spotlight and include heritage breeds in many of our videos. Today, we want to review why and share with you some statistics that you might find surprising. First off, what is a heritage breed? So, there really isn't a standard definition, although generally, regardless of what type of livestock, they exhibit a few key characteristics. According to the Livestock Conservancy, heritage breeds are traditional livestock breeds that were raised by our forefathers. These breeds were carefully selected and bred over time to develop traits that made them well adapted to the local environment and they thrived under farming practices and cultural conditions that are very different from those found in modern agriculture. Traditional historic breeds retain essential attributes for survival and self-sufficiency, fertility, foraging ability, longevity, maternal instincts, ability to mate naturally, and resistance to disease and parasites. Now the past hundred years has seen a great change in the way food is produced. Whether we're talking about produce, meat, eggs, or dairy, today's production model typically looks nothing like that from a century ago. And there have been some great benefits to this new production model. Standardization and efficiency can't be touched by the old way of raising crops and animals. But more and more people are recognizing that along with the benefits, this new way of producing food has come with some costs as well. So most modern commercial livestock operations focus heavily on specialized, super productive livestock. In fact, a mere 14 species provide 90% of the human food supply from animals. The result has been the loss of much of the genetic diversity that once existed. In Europe, half of the livestock breeds that existed at the turn of the last century are now extinct. In North America, over a third of livestock and poultry breeds are considered rare or in decline. In the U.S., the Holstein, the Holstein cow now represents an estimated 91% of the nation's dairy stock. Almost all of the chicken, meat, and eggs sold as food originate from just five industrial improved breeds of chicken, and of the 15 breeds of swine raised in this country just over 50 years ago, eight are now extinct. Over 90% of all turkeys produced in the U.S. are the broad-breasted white, a turkey that without human in intervention to artificially breed them would disappear in a single generation. Uh, in recent years, many heritage breeds have begun to make a comeback as hobby farms and homesteaders have been drawn to the advantages they offer over commercial varieties. But what are those heritage breeds really right for you? Uh, you're going to need to do some research and determine that for your own situation. But here are three advantages and three disadvantages to keeping heritage livestock breeds. Advantage number one is hardiness and self-sufficiency. Heritage breeds are adaptable and well suited to a range of climates, even extreme ones, something most commercial livestock don't fare well with. Another edge, unlike commercial varieties that often require medications and antibiotics to stave off disease and human intervention and assistance in mating and birthing, heritage breeds tend to be healthier and require less medical attention and human intervention. They'll find many of the vitamins and nutrients as they forage for their diet reducing not only diseases, but your feed bill as well. Just to clarify though, because this is probably the biggest myth that people buy into with heritage breeds, they will still require care and feed from you. Just maybe not as much as the commercial variety does. Mm -hmm. Heritage breeds typically reduce, but not eliminate your feed bill in time spent caring for them. Now the next benefit is the fact that with heritage breeds, it's often easier to maintain a do-it-yourself flock or herd. Now many commercial varieties aren't able to mate naturally or don't do well as mothers. It's considered an undesirable trait for mass production. Now heritage breeds mate naturally and tend to be fairly good mothers, making it easier to maintain your own flock or herd. Now this gives you a bit of self-sufficiency, something that many hobby farmers and homesteaders are looking for. You're not dependent on sourcing chicks, poults, or piglets each spring. Instead, you raise your own and potentially sell a few as income. And the third benefit of heritage breeds we'll mention today is versatility. 
Whereas commercial breeds are often bred for one purpose, like meat or eggs, many heritage livestock breeds are versatile, providing meat, milk, and eggs throughout the course of their life. Instead of having a cow that excels at milk production and then another cow for optimum beef output, you have one that does both effectively but less spectacularly. Right. Same with chicken and eggs. But I'm also going to flip this around and include this as the first negative as well. Okay. So, okay, so depending upon your goals, heritage breeds aren't going to be able to match the production of the commercial varieties. Mm -hmm. If you want over 300 eggs per year per hen or a 280 pound hog in five months, you're going to be disappointed with heritage breeds. They just can't match the efficiency of those commercial breeds. Right, and that plays into disadvantage number two, which is the cost in terms of both time and money. Generally, you're going to pay more to purchase breeding stock of heritage breeds, and they're going to take longer to mature, though again, they will provide much of their own diet through foraging if given appropriate space, but you'll spend more time bringing that animal up to butcher weight. This often means that you won't be able to raise that animal for what you can buy it for in the supermarket. And if your customers are okay with that because of the quality you can produce on your own, which many of them are, then great. But if you plan to sell your commodities to make a living, understand that many people familiar with only grocery store prices may not be willing to pay a premium for your product. And you likely won't be able to compete price-wise with commercial production. And downside number three is lack of standardization. So unlike the commercial breeds that offer a standardized product, right, heritage breeds can vary. Uh, you may get a great one or one that maybe isn't so great. So recognize also that if you plan to sell uh, those livestock products, your product won't be the same standard product people are used to. For example, right, I have Mangalitsa pigs and the pork chops they produce are going to be very, very different than the pork chops you find in the grocery mm -hmm. store. So for many, this is a benefit. But keep in mind, for some, it's going to be a negative. Yeah, heritage breeds are wonderful additions to the farm, but they're often touted as some sort of miracle. You don't have to buy any food, they never get sick, they produce the best tasting whatever that you've ever heard of. And people buy into that, buy their heritage animals, and are then disappointed when they find out the animals grow more slowly. They do still need to buy feed, and in the end, they taste and look different than what they were used to or expecting. So understanding ahead of time that there are some awesome benefits, but also a few drawbacks, helps ensure that you make an educated decision regarding adding heritage animals to your farm. So, is a heritage breed right for you? Well, only you can decide. Now recently I began raising Delaware chickens, a heritage breed, and I'm absolutely loving it. But let us know your experiences in the comments below. In the meantime, happy hobby farming. Bye everybody. Bye bye.